Breath of the Wild's world is not only the biggest the series has ever seen, but also the most real. People run for shelter when it rains, adventurers ride through the wilderness alongside travelling salesmen, and the few towns which survived the apocalyptic return of the Calamity Ganon glow with the warmth of civilization. But outside of the scattering of towns and villages lie the ruins, silent memorials of the massacre a century prior, ruined castles, streets, farms and homes which stand to remember the dead. But some ruins found in Breath of the Wild are even older than those caused by the Calamity. Ruins like those of the ancient Zonai tribe, an advanced civilization who vanished suddenly, leaving behind their works of intricate masonry. The stories of the game's ruins are never explicitly shown to us, just implied through their locations, designs and purposes. But these remnants of an ancient world are some of the most interesting parts of the game, and one of my absolute favourites lies hidden in the canyon of the Tabantha frontier in the northwest, the Forgotten Temple, one of the game's strangest mysteries. The Forgotten Temple is one of the most interesting places in the game, a vast stone palace half buried, seemingly built into the side of the canyon in which it lies. Ancient stone pillars mark the entrance to the temple, though the true doorway has been buried for centuries, and it's now only accessible from what was once the first floor balcony. From here, the true scale of the temple can be appreciated. It's one of the largest structures in the game, perhaps second only to Hyrule Castle itself, a colossal stone hall littered with rubble, foliage and crumbled stone. But when you enter the Forgotten Temple, you're not alone. The structure is filled with decayed guardians, immobile but still functional, burning with Calamity Ganon's malice. At the end of this first hall is a stone wall with a single hole through which Link can paraglide, leading to a second large hall with smaller stone pillars and a colossal goddess statue with Shrine Rona Kachta at its feet. The entrance to the temple, and especially this hole in the wall, feels like they were made deliberately rather than eroded over time, like they were made during an excavation of the ruins. Everything about the Forgotten Temple just feels like we're missing something. This giant, empty, ancient structure with the largest goddess statue found in Hyrule within, protected by scores of guardians, is never explained. We never learn the true origins of the Forgotten Temple. Who built this colossal stone structure and why? The first place to look for answers to the mystery of the Forgotten Temple is what we know for sure about the abandoned sanctuary. Breath of the Wild's lead structural artist, Manabu Takihara, writes that the Forgotten Temple was constructed in order to keep a record of the heroes throughout history who aided the royal family of Hyrule in the countless ancient battles against Ganon, who unleashed the calamity on a recovering world. Right away, this place gets a whole lot more interesting. These are the ruins of a great temple, built to honour the heroes of Hyrule's past, a great hall complete with a goddess statue which, in times long forgotten, would have been the destination of countless pilgrimages of those wishing to pay their respects to the legendary heroes and worship the goddess. Takihara's quote continues to shed light on the temple's origins. The original concept for the temple was that it had been abandoned for so long that it had faded from people's memories. At the beginning of development, the canyon was so deeply tied to the royal family that it was called the Valley of the Royal Family. And as with everywhere throughout Hyrule, the guardians here are possessed by Ganon. But rather than having invaded the temple from Hyrule Castle during the Great Calamity, they were placed here long ago to protect the facility. So already we know that this temple is likely more than 10,000 years old. Not only has it been abandoned long enough to fade from memory, the guardians found within were placed there deliberately to protect it, likely during the Sheikah's Age of Prosperity 10 millennia prior to the Great Calamity. The extreme age of the temple is further emphasised by Takihara, comparing the structure's architecture to that of Skyward Sword, including the Goddess Springs. Since it's a building that represents Hyrule's ancient past, the design incorporates construction elements from Skyward Sword in a similar way to the Springs of Wisdom, Courage and Power, as well as Lineru Road. 
The springs found throughout Breath of the Wild are clearly the ancient, decayed springs from Skyward Sword, featuring the same pillars, bird-like designs on the walls, and goddess statues. And the stone structures on Lanayru Promenade are likely from the same time period, featuring the same cubic design resembling a harp on its stonework, representing the goddess harp. So, like the springs, the Forgotten Temple dates back to before Skyward Sword, making it one of the oldest structures in the entire Zelda series. Though it's not only ancient architecture found in the Forgotten Temple, we can see that broken areas of larger brick walls have since been fixed with smaller bricks, and in the centre of the first hall we can even find a ruined wall designed the exact same way as modern Hylian buildings found all over Hyrule Field. So the mystery of the Forgotten Temple just gets even stranger. One of the largest structures in Hyrule, half buried and forgotten, dating back to the era of Skyward Sword. What is this place? To answer the mystery of the Forgotten Temple, we can look at the description for the quest A Gift from the Monks. This is the side quest given to Link after completion of all 120 shrines in the game, rewarding you with the Wild Outfit a classic green tunic designed specifically for this incarnation of Link. The description for this quest reads, Head to the Forgotten Temple, where the oldest statue of the goddess stands, to see what they have left for you there. This statue, found within the Forgotten Temple, isn't just the largest of its kind in Hyrule, but also the oldest. It was the first of the goddess statues which populate Hyrule's settlements and religious sanctuaries. Yet it stands here, lost from memory, in the great empty halls apparently built to honour Hyrule's heroes. The oldest statue of the goddess we see in the series appears in, you guessed it, Skyward Sword, which features many statues of the goddesses. Though the most notable is of course the largest, and probably the oldest, found on Skyloft, protecting the Chamber of the Sword and watching over the town amongst the clouds. It's inside this statue that the Hero of the Skies, the first hero in the timeline, drew the Goddess Sword which he tempered into the iconic Master Sword. And at the end of this game, the giant statue returned to the surface. When Link wished for the eradication of Demise upon the Triforce, the isle on which it stood descended from Skyloft, crushing the Demon King beneath thousands of tons of stone and returning to its original position behind the sealed temple. The Sealed Temple is one of the most important locations in Skyward Sword. It was originally built ages before the game, during the age in which the goddess Hylia lived among the people on the surface, known as the Temple of Hylia. But by the time of the game's events, centuries or millennia later, the Temple of Hylia has begun to crumble, and is known as the Sealed Temple. Originally, the statue of the goddess formed part of this temple, but after Demise's first appearance, it was raised along with a large slice of land to the heavens by the goddess Hylia, forming Skyloft. But now, by the time of Breath of the Wild, we see what is apparently the oldest statue of the goddess, a giant effigy found in the ruinous Forgotten Temple. The statue found in Skyward Sword is colossal, hundreds of feet tall, tall enough for Link to skydive off. Yet, in Breath of the Wild, while it's by far the largest of its kind in the game, what is apparently the oldest statue seems significantly smaller than the Skyward Sword counterpart. However, the sizes of all goddess statues are inconsistent. It's clear that Breath of the Wild's springs of power, wisdom and courage are intended to be springs from Skyward Sword, but the statues found in the springs are far larger in Breath of the Wild. Perhaps it's artistic license on the part of the designers, or perhaps there's a canonical reason for the statue's changes in size, I think it's possible that these two ancient, gargantuan goddess statues, found in two ancient temples an entire timeline apart, are actually one and the same. The sealed temple is a large stone building, with ornate carvings and multiple statues of Loftwings, and of course the goddess. Loftwings are extinct by the time of Breath of the Wild, and distinct Loftwing designs are found nowhere in its world, except for the Lanayru Promenade and the Forgotten Temple, where we can see stone statues which are clearly designed to represent the sacred birds. In fact, identical to these Loftwing statues found in Sky Keep, the dungeon located directly below Skyloft's statue of the goddess. 
Could the Forgotten Temple actually be the ancient sealed temple? The area surrounding the Forgotten Temple's giant goddess statue is extremely similar to the sealed temple. If we look at the walls in the statue's room, we can see the original walls with large stone bricks have since been built higher with smaller ones. But the originals are exactly the same walls which surrounded the Temple of Hylia's goddess statue, and the ground itself features the same pedestal onto which Link skydived, although now a shrine sits on it. If we walk out of the small area where the goddess statue lies, we walk into the main temple itself, which during Skyward Sword features eight large pillars, two rows of four, with a small grove to the left and an exit to the right. This small grove on the left actually plays an important role in the game. The thunder dragon Lanayru is found dead by the time of Link's adventure. Travelling back in time reveals that he requires fruit from the Tree of Life to survive, but despite the efforts of the robots, the tree won't grow in the barren Lanayru desert. Instead, Link can take the sapling to the fertile sealed temple's grove, planting it in the past. Upon returning to the present, he'll find that a large tree has grown, the Tree of Life, which bears fruit able to heal the Thunder Dragon. This isn't a regular tree, it's a sacred, powerful tree, the fruit of which acts as a panacea, a cure for all disease. Impa describes its sapling in the past. I sense great vitality in this sprout. With any luck, it shall grow into a stout tree that will live on for millennia. We never see this legendary tree after Skyward Sword, though at the end of the game it still stands strong. This great tree, which was found in a grove on the left-hand side of the eight main pillars in the sealed temple, eight pillars which are found within the Forgotten Temple, in the same location, directly in front of the goddess statue, through a door. And if we turn left at these eight pillars, a great tree, bursting through the rubble of the left wall. Could this be the Tree of Life? a sacred tree which has endured for millennia in the ruins of the temple in which it was once placed. The vast halls of the Forgotten Temple are built over the original, ancient, sealed temple. This goddess statue found within is the oldest in Hyrule, the very same which fell from Skyloft at the beginning of the Zelda timeline. And surrounding this statue we can see the ancient ruins of the sealed temple, one of the most important areas in Zelda's history, where the true Master Sword was first awakened, where Link and Fee parted, where Zelda slept for centuries to maintain the seal on demise. Despite its importance during Link and Zelda's quest, the sealed temple is a ruin by the end of Skyward Sword, with its ancient stone crumbling from centuries of neglect and the descent of part of Skyloft. Surrounding the ruins of the sealed temple in Breath of the Wild, however, is a great hall, likely built around the original temple in the years of peace after Link and Zelda settled on the surface after Demise's defeat, a great temple to mark the birthplace of Hyrule, which became a hall to record the feats of Hyrule's many heroes. A structure that would become the Forgotten Temple was constructed around the sealed temple, and by the time of Breath of the Wild, little of the original remains aside from the ancient goddess statue, pillars, and the resilient Tree of Life. After the Hero of the Wild proves his courage to the ancient Sheikah, besting all 120 shrines, he's awarded his place among the legendary warriors of old with a green tunic of his own, the Tunic of the Wild. And this tunic is given to Link inside the ancient ruins of the Forgotten Temple, a structure built in honour and reverence of the heroes of history, a structure built on the remains of the sealed temple. After proving his worth, Link becomes a true hero in the halls which remember his forebears, and it's fitting that this temple was built surrounding the exact location where, tens of thousands of years earlier, the very first hero awakened, for the first time in history drawing what would become the Master Sword from its pedestal and embarking on a quest to vanquish evil. Despite the evidence for this theory, there are admittedly a few issues. First off is the idea that, 
Sometime after Skyward Sword, Rauru built the Temple of Time over the ruins of the original sealed temple, which is noted both in Hyrule Historia and by King Rome in Breath of the Wild, who notes that the plateau's temple was the birthplace of Hyrule. Both sources are careful to mention that there's doubt surrounding this idea. We don't know for sure the true origins of the Temple of Time. Perhaps this iconic Zelda landmark was built and listed as the birthplace of the kingdom, with the true beginnings lost and forgotten. The second issue comes with the geography of the Forgotten Temple itself, found hidden in the Tanaga Canyon. The sealed temple in Skyward Sword was the centre of the known world, yet the Forgotten Temple lies in the northwest. It's unclear if this actually hurts the theory though, as it's been multiple tens of thousands of years since Skyward Sword, and Hyrule's ever-shifting geography is famously inconsistent. An idea that was taken into account when designing the Forgotten Temple was that it might have been unearthed by shifts in the Earth's crust, perhaps explaining its movement. The Luneru Promenade is also an enigma. It's designed with the same Skyward Sword architecture as the Forgotten Temple and the Springs, and it even features the giant Loftwing carvings. Despite this, it plays such a small role in the game's story, even smaller than the Forgotten Temple. Just more empty, grandiose ruins, the story of which is never told. Lanayru Road, if travelled from west to east, leads directly onto a pathway winding all the way up to Lanayru Peak, where the Spring of Wisdom is found. Considering the importance of the Golden Goddesses and the Triforce to Hylians either slightly before or slightly after Skyward Sword, it's possible that the promenade was built with the same architecture for pilgrimages to the Spring of Wisdom, a promenade by definition being an area for parades and walks. Like most things in Zelda, it's up to you to decide. The games often only leave hints to the true origins of things rather than explicitly confirming them. I'd like to believe that, based on the evidence, when we get the wild outfit from the monks in Breath of the Wild, we're doing so at the feet of the goddess statue from Skyward Sword, where the hero of the skies drew the goddess sword from its pedestal. But the geography and the legend of the Temple of Time's creation means that we don't know for sure. What do you guys think? Could the Forgotten Temple be built around the ruins of the sealed temple from Skyward Sword, including the goddess statue from Skyloft? If you like this video, please leave a like, it really helps the channel out, and subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.